Lesson 2.5, the fundamental theorem of algebra. What you should learn. How to use a fundamental theorem of algebra to, to find the number of zeros of a polynomial function. That's easy. Find those zeros of a polynomial function, including the complex zeros. That's more work. Find conjugate pairs of complex zeros, and then find the zeros by factoring. So, fundamental theorem of algebra came from Carl Frederick Gauss, one of the famous mathematicians. And it's actually a very simple form to understand. All it says is this. If you have a function, and it goes like x to the fifth plus blah, blah, blah then whatever that power is, that's the number of complex roots you have. Right, complex zeros. Remember zeros, roots, they all mean the same thing, right? That's how many solutions you have. Complex solutions. Not real solutions, complex. That's the fundamental theorem of algebra. So if you're solving a polynomial function, whatever the highest power is, that's how many complex roots you have. So that's what this is saying here, the linear factorization. So you could factor it linearly to get all these complex roots, blah, blah, blah. So zero is a polynomial function. So if you have a linear function, that's a power of one. So you have exactly one zero. And if you solve it, like said, equal to zero, right? Because if you're trying to find a zero, all finding a zero means is set the function equal to zero, like finding x intercepts. So it says zero equal to x squared, and you can just solve it, right? Power of one, you have one zero. If it's squared, then you should have two zeros, right? And you can set it equal to zero again and factor and you get the same zero at the multiplicity of two. Also known as a repeated zero or double root. If I give you x cubed, right? Then you should get at most three zeros. Now notice in this case, two of them are imaginary. That's fine, right? It's complex roots, not real roots. So we have three complex roots. If you get an x to the fourth, you should get at least four zeros. And that's what we did it here. So that's just showing you how this thing works, right? If I ask you how many zeros, how many complex zeros does this thing have, you just look at the highest power. That's the fundamental theorem of algebra. The highest power should be the number of complex, very important complex zeros. So how do you find the zeros of the polynomial? So I want to confirm that these are the zeros. So the easiest way to do it, if you can, is factor. So, and then solve. So the way we do this is you want to get down to x squared by factoring or synthetic division. We'll talk about that more later. And then once you get down to x squared, then you can solve by factoring or complete the square. Or quadratic formula, I should say. You can also complete the square if you want. So the key to solving a polynomial function is getting down to x squared. And we can do that lots of different ways. We could factor to get down to x squared or use synthetic division like we did in a previous lesson. So here, in this example, right, we're going to set equal to zero. We want to find the zero. So set equal to zero. And this one, we could just factor it. So they both have an x, pull out an x, and you get this. Split it, x equals zero, x squared plus four equals zero. This one's solved. This one we're going to solve. Subtract four from both sides. x squared equals negative four. Take the square root. Now when we take the square, you get a plus and minus. Square root of negative four. That's the same thing as just saying i, first of all, right? And the square root of four is two. So plus and minus two i. And there is our three solutions, right? We have zero plus and minus two i. We have two complex roots, imaginary roots, and then one real root. So I should say we have three complex roots, one real, two imaginary. How do I find the zero of this? I said right now it's x to the fifth. I'm not going to be able to factor it. So what we're going to do is what we did a couple of lessons ago. And we're going to find, we're going to list the possible roots, rational roots, and then we're going to do synthetic division to find a zero. And we're going to do that until we get down to x squared. And then once we get down to x squared, we can either factor it or use a quadratic formula. Right, it's all about getting down to x squared. So you can do it by factoring, you can do it by listing possible roots and going down to the division. So if we're doing this one, right, my possible roots, we're gonna do last over first. So we're gonna do eight over one, right? Eight on this one, one on that one. So we're gonna go plus and minus. That's gonna be plus and minus one, plus and minus two, plus and minus four, plus and minus eight over plus and minus one. So my possible roots, when we do all the combinations, 
So one, two, four, and eight. Then remember our next step is to use syntax division to sub substitute into this and see if we get a remainder of zero. At this point, you can either guess which one works and keep on trying to get a zero, or put in your calculator and graph it. And then you graph it. Remember, what you can do is you want to compare this to the graph. So this goes three. It looks like one's the solution. It might even be a double root. So I guess it'll be one to double root. I can use it twice. And maybe negative two. So those would be my, based on the graph, I would try one, maybe twice, double, and then negative two are the, that's bad, are the ones I would try. Right? So like I wouldn't try four, eight, then across there. So I would try one and one, maybe twice, one, and then negative two. So let's do syndic division. Now I have my the graph that I know what to, to try. It's one. It's missing x to the fourth. I see you book. You're not going to get me. So I'm going to put a zero x to the fourth there. Right? And then I'm going to go x cubed. So that's a one. And then two for x squared. Then minus 12 for x. And then eight. And the thing here should be a remainder. We want that to be zero. And we're going to bring the first one down. Um, let's try one. One looks easy. So bring the first one down. Multiply across. One. Add down. All right? So it's always bring the first one down. Multiply across add down and then you just repeat multiply add add down two multiply two add down four multiply four add down negative eight ne multiply eight, negative eight negative zero so boom x equal one is one root so now remember when we do this you go down a level right so this is x to the fifth this is x to the fourth we got some work to do i gotta get down to x squared I gotta do two more times so let's do it just straight from here again i want to get another remainder so hopefully it's zero. Since we have to do this like two more times, I think it is one to double root and then I'm negative two. So let's do one again. So I think it's a double root. So why knowing the graphs helps. So we're gonna bring down the one, we're gonna multiply across, add down, multiply across. It's a two. Very easy to make a small mistake like I almost made, right? One times one is two. Add down, multiply across, add down, multiply across. Add down. All right, almost made another mistake. Right, eight times one is eight, and then add and zero. So keep in mind, you want to keep track. I'm gonna, I'm gonna rewrite it this time because I don't want us to lose it. This is x cubed plus two x plus two x squared plus four x plus eight. Right, I got to get down to x squared. So I got to do this one more time to get down to x squared. So I'm gonna do it right here because I'm running out of space. Do some deck division again. This time I'm going to try negative 2 because based on our graph, it was 1, 1, and negative 2. I want the remainder to be 0 again, hopefully. Bring the first one down. That's a 1. Right, it's a coefficient of these guys. So that's a 1. Multiply across. Negative 2. Add down to 0. Multiply across. 0. Add down is 4. Multiply across is negative 8. 0. So there we go. We got 1 twice, and then we got negative 2. So those are three of my roots. Remember, there's a total of five solutions, five complex solutions. I found three of them by doing some data division. And what do we have here? We have, this was x cubed, so it's one less, plus zero x. I'll just, put, I'll just skip it and then put plus four. And then you always want to set equal to zero because we're finding the zero. So you set your answer equal to zero. This you get to solve. I could use a quadratic form, but I don't need to. I get to solve it. x squared equals negative four, square root. And we get plus and minus two y. So those are all my roots. We have 1, 1, negative 2, and plus and minus 2y. Those are all five complex roots. We had three real and two imaginary. And that's important here. We had two imaginary. Thing is, imaginary numbers always come in pairs. They come in the complex conjugates. This is a conjugate, plus 2y minus 2y. So that's the thing about imaginary numbers. They always come Imaginary roots always come in pairs. It's always, if it's a plus bi, it's going to be a minus bi. Even if it's a zero, if it's not there like we just had, you have bi and you have negative bi. They always, always, always come in complex conjugates every single time. So I look at this example here. Find a fourth degree polynomial function. The real coefficients are negative one, negative one, and three i as zeros. You're like, wait, it's a fourth degree. Why do I have only three roots? It's because this comes in a pair. If you have 3i, you also have the conjugate, negative 3i. Those are my four roots. 
negative 1, negative 1, 3i and negative because i is come in pairs. So how do we write this? Remember, it's the opposite. It's going to be x plus 1, x plus 1. Over here, it's going to be x minus 3i and then x plus 3i. Right. That's where we write our function. Now, they generally want to multiply this out. The trick to multiply now is you always want to do multiply pairwise. So multiply these two, and then we'll multiply. I'll multiply these two, and then we'll go one by one through here. So multiply these two first. You always want to multiply the i's first, because it'll, it'll get rid of the i. So x times x is x squared. x times that is x 3xi. This is minus 3xi. And then minus 9i squared. These cancel out. Don't forget i squared is a negative 1. And don't forget we're multiplying, not adding. So I get x squared plus 9. Then we can times that by x plus 1 and x plus 1. Again, if we wanted to keep on going, we could just, we'll just multiply it again. I guess they want the four, find the fourth degree, so I should keep it going. When you multiply polynomials, you always do it two at a time. So I'm just going to multiply these two. This one probably be better where you could do the area model. I'm going to get x cubed plus 9x plus x squared plus 9. So I got x cubed plus x squared plus 9x plus 9. Times that by x plus 1. So I'm going to do it one more time. x times all these guys. I'm going to get, I'm going to do it over here. I'm going to add space x to the 4 plus x cubed plus 9x squared plus 9x. And we're going to multiply 1 times all these guys. I'm going to put it down here x cubed plus x squared plus 9x plus 9. Add these up. x to the fourth. Remember when you add, you only add up like terms. So it's be 2x cubed plus 10x squared plus 18x plus 9. There is my function. All right, that was a lot of work. The important part of this is, though is how do I get it to go from here to like here. Right? Now forget i's come in pairs, so if you have 3i, you also have negative 3i. And then you write the opposite, so x plus 1, x plus 1, x minus 3i, x plus 3i. Now if they want you to go further, always multiply the i's together first, because you get rid of the i. So multiply those two together first, you have something like this, and it's just annoying work, right? Multiply this, you get something like that, and then get simplify your answer, multiply by that one. You, when you're multiplying polynomials, you always do it two at a time. You can't multiply all three. Anything you multiply, it's always two at a time. Okay, next one. Find a cubic column with the real coefficients 2 and 1 mi minus i. So here, we have x minus 2. Here, remember, we, they always compare. So if you have 1 minus i, you also have 1 plus i. Now, this is going to get ugly. <laughs> I'm warning you right now. So how do we write this? That's going to be one x, sorry, minus 1 minus i. That's how you have to write this one, right? It's, it's always a minus sign by default. So over here was a minus sign, but it was a there's a minus, so there were two negatives make a positive. So it's always a minus sign by default. So x minus 2, x minus that guy, and then we also got to do the pair. x minus 1 plus i. Right? By default, is always a minus. So it's x minus this and x minus this. I would simplify these guys first. Oh, what did they give me this for? Because technically the last one, we, we we weren't technically correct, right? We didn't put, the, there's like an A in front of something. Like I should put an A here and find that out. But this one, we find anyone. This one wants me to find the specific one that has this. So we got to put an A in front. We have to find that A at the very end. But first, let's get rid of all this disaster first. So the trick is simplify this guy first. So this should be the negative. I get x minus 1 plus i. This should be the negative x minus 1 minus i, x minus 2, a, and y. And just like before, there's no shortcut. You just got to multiply these two together first. See, then multiply these two. <sighs> Every model will probably help here also, I think. But I'm going to do this. x squared minus x minus xi. And then multiply this by all of these. So minus x plus 1 plus xi, and then this one, plus ix, minus i, plus i squared. Remember, i squared is a negative 1. That'll come in handy. And before everyone, I caught a mistake. 
negative 1 times negative i is just negative i. Why did I put xi? So it should be negative i there. Sorry about that. All right. So negative 1 times x is negative x. Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. Negative 1 times negative i is actually a positive i. There we go. And I think I just correct. x negative i. Negative i squared is negative i. Okay. Now let's see if anything cancels out. So generally all the i should cancel. So like right here it's negative x i and a positive x i. So these cancel. And then we have a negative i and a positive i. So these cancel. What's what we have left over? x squared minus x minus x plus 1 minus 1. So I'm going to write the negative one right there. So these cancel out. And I get x squared minus 2x. It's, I believe, what I got. Hopefully that's right. <laughs> and then we have x minus 2. And then we have a y equals a. And then here I'm supposed to multiply these out. Uh, x cubed minus 2x squared minus 2x squared plus 4x. So we get y equals, these to add together, x cubed minus 4x squared plus 4x. And I almost forgot there's an a in front. Okay, we did all this work and we still got to figure out what a is. So we have to substitute in 1 and 3. Remember, this is our x, this is our y. So plug in 1 to all the x's, and our y is 3. So 3 equals a times, what is that, 1 minus 4 plus 4. Those cancel out. So a equals 3. At least that was kind of painless. So our answer is going to be this. That's a 3. Let's, let's do this. Sorry. 3x cubed minus 4x squared plus 4x. And technically, we probably should simplify that and get y equals 3x squared minus 12x squared plus 12. And that's the final answer, right? I, anytime there's a, a binomial i, it's disgusting. I'm sorry, which was an easier way to round it, but that's what it is. It's right. So if I have this, I have to write, do my pairs, write it like this, x minus this, x minus that, distribute. And then you, you always want to multiply the i's together first, and then that's disgusting and ugly, but yeah, I, I got this. Multiply by this to simplify it. So I got this right here, right? And once you got down to here, you just plug in the point, sub it in. x is 1, y is 3. Luckily enough, that was a equals just 3, and then you just rewrite it all and simplify. Okay, next we're going to talk about factoring a polynomial. Now let's talk about the thing we, sh we should all know. is how to factor by a difference of the squares. So a squared minus b squared, which you know that gets us a minus b a plus b or vice versa so it's super important right it's a shortcut of going okay i need to factor a difference of two squares i get a minus b a plus b so like for example if i want to factor x squared minus 49 that's gonna be oh they're both squares i could take the square of 49 x minus 7 x plus 7. but we're going to teach a little advanced tricks here so the first advanced trick is it works even if it's not a square if i give you a squared minus b i can still factor that that's a minus square root of b, a plus the square root of b. It still works. It's just, it's the same process, right? You square, you square root both of them, even if you can't square root it. It still works. So for example, I should do this. If I give you x squared minus 5, that's actually factorable. x minus square root of 5, x plus the square root of 5. Now it's not a rational number, it's irrational but it's still factorable. And then the even more pro move is you could do it with i's. So before I, we told you you can't factor this, not possible. You actually can if it's i's. So you could get a plus bi and a minus bi. So it actually does work. It just It's an imaginary number. So we always taught you this because that works for reals and rationals. It does work for irrationals, and it actually does work for imaginary numbers. You just gotta know the process. So those are the shortcuts. If you have a squared minus b squared, it's a minus b a plus b. If it's not factorable, you can still do it. You're just not gonna get a rational. You're not gonna get a. You're gonna get a, a an irrational number. And if it's a plus, you can actually still do it. It's just gonna be imaginary. It's like that's the shortcut. So here, let's say you want to factor this. 
Now keep in mind, I could, this is the trinomial, so I could factor it like normal, even though it's x to the 4 from x squared. You just unfactor that like normal. We're going to do the big X, negative 20, negative 1. Only difference is that since it's x squared in the middle and x to the 4 up here, anytime this is half of this, you can still factor it. Just put this down as a, as a first thing. So x squared, x squared, like that. Or two things I multiply to get negative 20, but I have to get negative 1. That would be negative 5 and 4. So one of these is negative 5. One of these is plus four. And there we go. That's factored as a product of factors over random. So there, there it is. B, as a product of linear factors of quadratic that are ir irreducible over the real. So they want real numbers. So this is not going to give me a real number. So I could factor this one still. Now it's just going to give me an irrational number, right? So we can still factor this. That's going to give us x minus square root of five, x plus the square root of five. And I still can't do anything here because that's going to give me an imaginary number. So keep it like that. So like that. That's B. And then C sits so completely factored. So that you want to get the I's in there also. So I could factor this with I's. So Y equals X minus square root of 5. X plus the square root of 5. X plus 2I. X minus 2I. So that's the full thing. Okay, last problem. Probably going to be kind of disgusting. So let's see. Find all the zeros of this. So we want to find all four zeros. They do give us one zero. And technically that's two zeros, right? Because they give me x plus 3i. I also have x or 1 plus 2i. I also have x 1 minus 3i. I have the conjugates. Now what we're going to do here is, since I have two roots, we're going to rewrite this. We're going to, like, we're going to re rewrite this as a rational. So x minus 1 plus 3i and x minus 1 minus 3i. And let's multiply these together. So x minus 1 minus 3i, x minus 1 plus 3i. We're going to multiply these together, x times all these. So I get x minus x squared minus x plus 3xi. Then multiply this one by all of them. So minus x plus 1 minus 3i. Let's multiply this one by all of them. Minus 3xi plus 3i minus 9i squared. So i squared is a negative 1, so I'm going to get a plus 9. All right, now let's see what cancels out. All the i should cancel out. So like this guy and this guy cancel out. Negative 3i and plus 3i cancel out. Everything else is fair game, right? So like here x squared. I have these two, so that's minus 2x, and I have 1 and positive 9, so plus 10. So I have that. Multiply my by 0, I got this. So how do I deal with this and this? Well, I could do long division, right? Because I know this is a factor. I know this is a 0, so it's a factor. So if I divide this guy by this guy, I'm going to get an x squared, because x to the fourth divided by x squared is x squared. And then once you have x squared, you can just solve it. Quadratic form or just factor. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to divide this guy, x to the fourth, minus 3x squared cubed, plus 6x squared, plus 2x, minus 60. And we're going to divide it by the answer we just found, x squared minus 2x plus 10. So look at the first two x squared, remember you only, look, only ever look at the first two, that's all you care about. x squared goes into x to the fourth, x squared times, multiply it, so I get x to the fourth minus 2x cubed plus 10x to the squared. And then we're going to subtract, remember I like to distribute the negatives, it becomes negative x to the fourth plus 2x cubed minus 10x squared. These cancel, I get negative x cubed minus 4x squared. Bring the next one down. All right, we always just look at the first two. So I'm going to need a negative x here. Multiply it by negative x. So negative x cubed plus 2x squared minus 10x. Again, we got to subtract. So parentheses minus. I like to distribute. So I'm going to get plus x cubed minus 2x squared 
plus 10x. These cancel, I get negative 6x squared plus 12x, bring down the negative 60. Okay, last one here. Look at the first two, I need a negative 6. So negative 6x squared plus 12x minus 60. These are going to cancel each other out, they're exactly the same. So we get this. Now we still got to solve this, but that's actually a thing that this factors. Negative 6, negative 1, negative 3, and negative positive 2. So x minus 3, x plus 2, equal to 0, split it, x equals 3, and negative 2. So those are all, given final, that those are all the zeros, all four zeros, right? 1 plus 3, which means we also have 1 minus 3. We multiply them together to get this, and then we did long division to get the remaining thing, and then we factor that, and I got those. And that's the lesson.